2012 is about the Mayan calendar expiring at 2012 and the world coming to an end. Roland Emmerich, the king of disaster films, has uh, put together a giant movie that's a disaster movie that portrays the end of the earth. But what's nice about it, it has a story. I was thrilled. I was like beside myself reading this thing, seeing the first storyboards and the big posters of the, the, the sketch artists, and it was just stunning. So then we really understood what the scale is of that movie, where it's the biggest thing I've ever seen, for sure. Obviously, this L.A. earthquake, L.A. airplane, is a, it's an amazing showcase sequence that we're all really proud of. It's a, it's a fun ride, and anytime you show it to anybody, people are like, wow, that was great. Through these massive scenes, we tried to create little micro pockets where you, you have a large eruption and, and you play that, you see it, you play it, and then you go into a person's head that is in that car, in that earthquake, and you just play his point of view. And you focus on that, then you go into a little dialogue line, and then you cut wide and you go really large again. Paul Audison, our uh, supervising sound editor and sound designer, he orchestrated every sound effect that it had a little placement and, and have a purpose. So he knew that if you have a car horn and a screen at the same time, it's not gonna work. So you offset one, cheat it, and it has a rhythm to it. It's a 40 minute sequence of this movie where people will be basically on the edge of their seat. And what's interesting about that is when that concludes, you're about an hour into the movie. There's still an hour and a half left. And you go, what's next? What's left after that? So there's a Yellowstone eruption. You see the thing erupting and you hear no sound because obviously there's a large delay since it's so far away. And you see the trees falling over on the hillsides and you hear that low end rumble that starts at five or 10 hertz. And you sit there and you feel your pants flap or your toe tickle and then it just resonates up. Then the shock wave hits you and that is actually the loudest point. It's not the explosion, but it's the, w the wind hitting you and, and that resonance sound is one of my favorite scenes. It's a very simple design really, but it, it, it's super effective. This is a unique movie because it has 1600 visual effects scenes. Normally you have a couple hundred visual effects shots and this is like, okay, you have an eight minute chase through LA and the only thing that is real is them driving in a car down a dirt road in Vancouver and now you're looking at this picture and there's the world falling apart around it. We had to create a destruction zone from scratch. Obviously a movie about the world ending and disasters is just gigantic. I mean, you've got the Vatican rolling over your head. We didn't want to just batter the audience with just audio. We wanted to have it very powerful, very full, very low end, just beat. But we didn't want to abuse the audience. That was the key, that was one of our approaches. Because if you ever go to a movie and it's too loud and it hurts and you just you just you hit certain frequencies, it's, it's not fun anymore. We wanted this to be a, a, a fun ride for everybody. There's not really a hard cut sonically. It, it, there's always a scene ends and the next scene, before you see the scene, it slingshots you into the next section. So before you even see it, you're already in it and, and it's just a super smooth round mix and I'm, I'm really proud of that. I love this movie, I really do. It's got a lot of heart, it's got a, you know, a really cool story. I like the people that are in it and I love obviously the sound opportunity that we were given in this movie, this let loose. This is one of those really challenging projects that you know, us as sound geeks, we could just dig our teeth in and just ride with it and just have a great time. <laughs>